let me bring on board Amit Jaiswal, CFO Royal Orchid Hotels, to talk to us about how festive trends are expected to play out. Bookings would have likely started, traction would have picked up. Uh, Mr. Jaiswal, welcome, good morning. want to quickly check in. So how's the traction looking this festive season? See, the festive season is looking very good. Uh, historically, if you see, uh, you know, the third quarter for our industry, that is the third and the fourth quarter always has been good. And uh, even this quarter, it is looking very promising. All our leather, leather hotels have done very well in the last week. <clears throat> you know, we had high ARRs, high occupancies in the last, uh, last week and so on. So, uh, you know, we are poised to do very well going forward this quarter as well as the next quarter. Hi, Mr. Jaiswal. This is Anushi joining in. I um, want to address to you now, if you look at the Q1 performance, now if you take the whole hospitality in industry in picture, there was a lull in bookings as well as the ARR growth and occupancy. So I want to understand from there on for your company, how has the growth picked up from July, August onwards and what can what is the sort of ARR growth and the occupancies that we expect for the H2 of FY25? See, uh, historically what happens is generally we compare ourselves with last year. Okay, last year, you know, the growth in ARR and occupancies were good. You know, Post-COVID, uh, post the pandemic, we started growing. The industry has grown very well, so has our company. Uh, but this year, first quarter was not that great because of elections and the heat waves across the country. So the, our first quarter were not uh, very good. Uh, but the second quarter we started, have, you know, all the hotels have done well, in the, have started doing well. And uh, the ARR growth, as far as the ARR growth is concerned, that is anywhere between, you know, 7-8%. We As of now, we are looking at as of now, as the year progresses, because the Q3 and Q4 is always a better quarter than the first half. So uh, we are looking at an ARR growth of somewhere around, you know, 8 to 10 percent. OK, and an occupancy growth of around 5 percent this year, because occupancy is already were at a very higher level. So you, you once you have reached 70 percent plus, you know, the room to grow the occupancy is not there much. However, you know, all our hotels are doing well. Uh, we got hit in the first quarter, but second quarter onwards, we have picked it up. Fair point. Um, any scope for increase with regard to uh, that uh, realization or ARR number? Uh, would you expect that likely to uh, trend upwards in the second half of this year? Because you indicated that, uh, but you're still suggesting just about a seven odd percent increase. This year. Yes, yes, yes. See, we had suggested the increase because the first quarter went bad for the industry as a whole. So we were little on the back foot. So we are not very aggressive in the second quarter. However, the way it looking, it looks, it appears that the coming festive season and the new year looks very promising. So we are going to increase our ARRs by another, you know, three, four percent. So. Uh, you know, I should be touching at uh, anywhere between 8 to 10 percent growth in the overall growth in the area. Some of the hotels have done more than 10, 50, uh, even some of the hotels have increased by 15 percent. But some some markets has been little flattish. So the overall area growth will be in that range. Mr. Jaiswal, now if you look at, you've given us a breakdown of how the Q1 went and um, you did mention the election impact and there was heat waves as well which has led to the 6% yeah. of the revenue growth. Now if uh, we take the FY25 picture into account, you've carried for a 10% growth. But it's FY26 which is the most exciting one wherein if uh, you've targeted a revenue of about 500 crore which is about a 60% growth. I want to understand what is the shift happening between FY25 to 26 which is leading to the strong growth picture for the company. See, uh, we, are, we will be opening our Bombay hotel towards the end of the fourth quarter. That uh, how the plan goes towards the end of the fourth quarter. We will be opening our Bombay hotel which is a 300 room property. 300 room five star hotel and uh, it is next to the terminal 2 so that hotel will give a big boost to the overall numbers of the company the overall revenues of the company and we are around 100 crores addition will be there from that one hotel so that's why we are poised uh, to do the one of the best 
financial year will be FY26 for our company as well. Apart from that, couple of you know leases also are coming up, which will also give, which will be there throughout the year next financial year. So that's why we are very buoyant about the performance of our company in the next financial year. So, uh, so just tell us, talk to us about this Bombay Hotel. So, 5,300 odd rupees is your current ARR, uh, just for viewer context. What would be the yeah. ARR for the Mumbai Hotel? Because you seem to suggest that the rates will be markedly different from your yeah. uh, from your average. Absolutely. So, the, there the rates, see, Bombay market itself is a very good market. And for, for years, we have been trying to get a good property in Bombay, now that we are successful and there the ARRs will be, you know, somewhere between 8 to 10,000 rupees, it should be there. So that will take our overall ARR of our company to a next leap, I think. How large is this one? How many keys does it give you? 300. Okay, got it. And uh, what are the other new launches in the pipeline, both in this quarter, which is Q3 as well as Q4? I won't talk much about Q2 because uh, maybe you're on silent period, but just talk to us about the full year, especially H2, if you can. See, as far as H2 is concerned, actually we have around 24 hotels in the pipeline. But what happens is that unless the hotel is open, we don't, uh, you know, uh, declare it in the market. However, what are the upcoming hotels we have always put down in the public domain? It's there in our investors' presentation in the uploaded on the BSE. So, in the, from now till March, we think around 11 hotels we are going to open out of this 24. But in that, the rev the revenue share model is the Mumbai one. Balance all are managed. Now, uh, by end of March, we will also open a 128 keys uh, hotel in uh, Gurgaon. That is also under revenue share. So these two hotels will give a good top line for the company. And sir, just give us, uh, I'm not asking you for specific numbers, but just give us a direction if you can. Q1 was slower, of course, you've suggested that. Is there a significant pickup Q2 onwards or has Q2 also no. been largely uh, soft and Q3 is when you'll start to see the pickup. Exactly, you said it. Q1 was bad. Q2, large, it is not a very, you know, uh, high, I will not say that because it rained heavily in July and August and all our hill station properties uh, were really affected by the rains. But Q2 ha is, has, uh, is better than last year, but the real change will happen in Q3 and Q4. Okay, so Q3 and Q4 remains as a definite watch out for the business. Yes. Now, you've yes. mentioned about opening 11 to 12 hotels. There's also a lot of uh, pipeline in terms of the greenfield and the brownfield expansions that are taking yes. place. I want to understand what are the capex requirements for the business uh, for this picture. And these greenfield and brownfield expansions, if you can just help us with a timeline of some of the key projects, um, the opening dates for these ones. Yeah, so what happens as far as the CAPEX is concerned, see in management property, we don't have to deploy any fund. There is no CAPEX for the management. It's only for the revenue share model where we invest. Like in Bombay, our, you know, including the lease deposit, our investment will be around 60 crores. Okay, and in Gurgaon, another six, seven crores. But at the same time, what we have done is that we are planning to increase the existing hotels inventory. Like in our resort in Bangalore, okay, we are adding another 28 rooms, which also will start the new wing, will start the operations probably from the end of January. Okay, so two months we will get in the last quarter. And there we have a capex of around 11, 12 crores. 12 crores capex in there. Plus we are having a capex of around 25 crores in Goa. Again, that is addition of the rooms. In Goa Hotel, we have 73 rooms and we are trying to add another 40 plus uh, rooms there. So, but that will come up next financial year only, not in this year. So right. This, this is a more or less capex. And plus we are doing some uh, upgradation of our property, which we continue to do. Our flagship also is getting upgraded, which will give a boost to the, you know, uh, overall revenues of the or company. Right, that was a clear picture on the capex on how it is going to pan out in the next one to yeah. two years. But coming to the margins, now Q1, there was a dip in the margins that we were looking at. There were increase in some of the expenses. Um, going yes. forward for FY25, considering the higher share of um, these new hotels coming into picture, higher revenue growth, what is your margin guidance for the next uh, one to two years for FY25 and even for the near term? See, for FY25, I think the margins will be a little flattish. 
because we are in the process of upgrading most of our hotel. So there is a lot of R&M cost which is going up. But real growth in the margins will happen in the FY26. Definitely, there will be good growth of roughly around 20% in the margins growth in the next uh, financial year. Okay. Uh, so just give us context. So you go from the current, uh, uh, if I can just pull out your numbers, around 300 odd crores, 295 crore yes. you, you did in FY24. You go to 500 yes. crore very quickly, right? Yes. And you're also guiding for a margin uptake uh, uh, of maybe two to three or maybe two to three percent. Uh, is that is that the right way to look at this? No, no, no. See, like the see, you said my top line is around 300 crores in FY24. Yes. That will grow. To, that will grow to you know 300, uh, you know 30 odd crores in the in the current financial year. Our PAT profit after tax, which was around 49 crores in last year, that will go to 50 odd 55 crores in this year. Next financial year, it will go to roughly 60 plus 65 crores. Uh, you know, ah, PAT should. I take your point. So 20% growth on PAT in FY26. And what happens? What's the margin picture like, sir? Could you give us because? We've seen some one-offs in FY23, right? Uh, it was a very strong year for the entire industry. So on a higher base, FY24 was slightly lower, but nonetheless was very impressive. Uh, how does it evolve as you scale? Because 300 and 500 is a huge difference in terms of top line. Just talk us through where the margin number goes. See, I'll tell you what happens is when you do a revenue share, there the margins are a little lower. It is not as good as in the owned hotels. See, owned hotels, you you your margins are higher because you have invested a lot of money. Okay. Whereas in these hotels, what are coming to we have, we don't have a lot of capital deployment in these hotels. Okay. So the very important part of any industry is the return on capital employed. And let me tell you on record, the ROC of our company is the highest in the industry in India. Okay. And we are looking forward to maintaining our ROC, you know, uh, margins in such a way that it should look lucrative. You know, with a top line of 300 crores, you are doing a bottom line of 50 crores, which is a very good combination of the pad. So we are trying to maintain that. But what happens in, in, a, in a revenue share model, what happens is the profit, what we get, the operating profit, out of that operating profit only, we pay the lease rent. Okay, so the left out is not that much what is left out in the owned hotel. So that's why our percentage may come down, but the absolute number will keep on growing. But please understand that in all these revenue share hotels, we don't have a huge capital deployment. And that is why the ROC will keep on improving. Uh, right, Mr. Jaiswal, you've mentioned about the revenue share model. Now, if um, your commentary is to be taken into perspective, you're expecting about 10 to 15 percent of new hotels coming in with this model. So, yes. you want to understand a clear picture between the revenue share model, the managed model, and your own hotels one. How do the margins differ across these segments, and what is the trajectory ahead? Because you've uh, guided for a margin growth as well. So, how do you uh, want to just understand between the segments, how does it look like? Very, very intelligent question you've asked. So, that will explain a lot of stuff. Management, when there is a management hotel, where our deployment of capital is zero, okay? And we get a management fees of roughly 6% of the total revenues. That's the income we get from management hotel. Now, when it comes to revenue model, revenue share model, there the capital deployment is not very high, but minimal like some deposit and then some working capital we need. So there the margins are, the operating margins are anywhere between 40 to 45%. And around 25, 27% we pay it to the owners who has employed, uh, deployed their capital to make the hotel. And the balance around, you know, 15% is our margin yeah, in the revenue share model. Anywhere between 12 to 15, if it is performing good, 15%. If it's not performing very good, then around 12%. But here there is a little capital deployment. Whereas little means some deposit and some working capital. So, so uh, hypothetically in a hotel of say around 80 rooms, which can do a top line of 10 crores, the deployment of capital is around four, five crores. Okay, now coming back to third, the owned model, you you 100 room property today, will, uh, we, you have to invest around 75 to 80 crores. There you will get around 40% of the top line, that is suppose 10 crores is the top line. 
So you need to, or 12 crore is the top line. So you get around 40% of that, around five crores as the bottom. So the return on capital employed in my own hotel is not that great. You know, it will be, you know, over a period because the appreciation in the value of the hotel doesn't reflect in the books of accounts. Like our flagship hotel in Raw Locket, that's in Bangalore, the book, book cost of that hotel is roughly around 10 crores today. Okay, but, you know, the capital deployment was done at that point of time. But today, if you really see the valuation of that hotel is around 250 crores. So this difference of 240 crores never reflects in the books of accounts. So that is why we have followed the asset light strategy, which is in the interest of all our investors and and uh, the company as a whole, where the capital deployment is not high, but the return on capital is very high. So focus on ROC and not margin. Is that your net net uh, uh, thesis? You said it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and breaking down the hotel business actually. So thank you for coming in and chatting with us. Thank you. Sir.